So it's been a while since I've done a shop project and I'm, and I'm sad about it because I, I love giving you guys the shop projects. One thing that seems to be an issue here in the shop is the uh, collection of stuff underneath our mural. Yeah, not looking good over there. So I'm gonna clean that up with this, what I think is a pretty killer modular uh, sort of storage shop cabinet thingamajig. That should be pretty badass and look pretty what we call sex bob. Let's go. So this project is a little bit more intense. We've got some, some features. I think there's like, I don't know, seven drawers, two vertical pullouts. But like most projects in the shop, it's gonna start out with some plywood. So now we gotta hump this stuff around. All right, kids, so I want, I don't like the way plywood looks, but that's just a preference. So we're gonna hardwood edge band everything. You could use iron on, or you could just leave it. Both would work fine. Ironically, we're also doing full overlay cabinet doors, so you won't see them when it's closed, just when it's open. Uh, so what you just watched was me mill out some hardwood edge banding, and now we're gonna slap a roost. I can't believe that stayed. What the? <laughs> slap that down on top of there with some speed set this is a like what is this 20 minute drying glue or something and do all the parts before we we start cutting joinery and assembling all right so the edge banding has dried up Took 30 minutes, we were feeling kind, we gave it a little more time. So now we're gonna put this carcass together. Um, I'm gonna be using a combination of pin nails, face screws, and your favorite, pocket holes. Should go together pretty quick, let's get to it. Because this is like a seven foot wide bank of cabinets, we are building the toe kick separate and then we're gonna level that. That way we can just slide this cabinet on and not have to worry about leveling it after. So to do so, Jordan's marking where our studs are on the wall first. And then secondly, we will level this box um, using some blocks here. And then lastly, we will come and mock up the carcass on top, giving us where it's going to live and then fasten it down into this box on here, same way you would do a built-in. Well, go figure, we have a drain right here and this ends up being the flattest, levelest part of the entire shop. So we're just gonna bang it into the wall. Sorry, don't get to show you any juicy, crazy squirreliness, but there still could be some to come. Before Sam dives into these drawers, I wanna real quick tell you about our brand new newsletter, The Weekly Punch. We're having a lot of fun with this. It's a culmination of what's going on in the shop, some tips, some of our favorite things happening, what myself and the guys are listening to potentially, and all kinds of good stuff. Cost you nothing to sign up, and we will be exclusively launching down the line some discount codes for products and merch and all kinds of good stuff. So if you're interested in signing up for that, I got a link down below. Go ahead, crush that, and now let's get back to Sam crushing these drawers. Now we have to make the drawers, so we got the strips over there. Just gotta cut them down to size, put the dados, put the pocket holes, make them squares, and then uh, put the panels in the bottom and this thing should have drawers. But where's John? He's gone. It's my channel now. So Sam did a slightly above average job of getting the drawers done. And the only reason I say that is because how many mistakes did you make, Sam? Uh, 16. One, and then I made another mistake <laughs> fixing the first Our communication channel was completely broken, and I literally handed him, I said, 
You handed me a half done drawing. I handed him a half. So I have the full drawing, but I printed this because I know what's going on, but Sam's helped me out because I had some administrative BS to do in the office. <laughs> anyway, he got it done. He's got everything fixed. So all of our drawer boxes are done, which means it's time for the divider in the bottom left and faces and a top. Let's rip. This is our new shaper. We've been using it to make doors. And this is Jordan. Jordan shaved his mustache off because you're not subscribed to our channel. So subscribe and he'll grow his mustache back. Thank you. Now, let's make some wood. All right, kiddos. So Sam has been doing a good job of getting all of our doors and drawer faces together. We like to do these integral handles. The reason I like these in the shop is um, you don't have something sticking out you can catch your pants on or catch when you're walking by. For all of you that get upset saying that things will get into the cabinet because it's an opening or whatever, that's a personal problem. These are free. These are free. And he did a bunch of these. And I, yeah, the drawer pulls don't cost me any money. So for the last one, uh, just walk you through it a little bit. We've got a flush bit here from bits and bits um, and then we've got a template of one of the ones we had already this one didn't fit in our jig we make so many of these that we actually have a jig that we just clamp into and go ahead and use for pretty much pretty much all of it now that i'm saying it um so that's what you're that's what you've been seeing sam do and that's what you're gonna see me do on this door Our drawer slides are in the mail, which means I can't put them on. So we're gonna to move to the top. We're gonna to put a solid wood edge banding on the top to beef it up a bit. Um, and to do so, I'm gonna show you guys a little biscuit joiner tip. Segment, just the tip with John and Sam. All right, so most of you are probably using your biscuit joiner just to cut what would be a normal biscuit pocket. Here we're gonna use it to cut some slots because it doesn't actually matter because all it is is a point of reference for us to keep our edge banding nice and flat. Let me show you. So you see we've got some biscuits in the edge banding. Typically, the traditional way to do this would be to take the center of your biscuit, line it up with your piece, take a mark here, where's that at? Here, transfer that mark, you don't need to have you don't have to do any of that here. What we do is run a slot. All right, so now it doesn't actually matter where the biscuits are because they align perfectly to the top, see? And then you can shimmy these left to right, give yourself perfect alignment. I feel like this project is just never ending. We're kind of doing this in between a bunch of other stuff we got going on. But finally, we have a countertop glued up, dry, time to pull this thing out of clamps, get it sanded, get it trimmed to size, put a little edge on it. We got to do a little psh, psh, lettuce spray kind of action, uh, drawer slides, hinges, and then I think this thing's going to be done. Story time. This is a story about four idiots that work together and don't know how to speak English or measure. This edge banding on this was supposed to be an inch and a half thick to match this. It's not. It's like, what was it? Two and two? Inch and three quarters. Inch and three quarters. Not the end of the world, but now it doesn't fit flush against the wall because of this lip here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take the flush trim router, trim this back, clear out these corners so that it sits flat and against the wall. Because I kind of like the way that little detail works around the, the front three, the two sides in the front. It just doesn't work on the back because then the cabinet either doesn't sit against the wall or the countertop would be kind of janky. We're going to fix it. It's going to be great. This is how it goes sometimes, especially when you, you get a napkin sketch and you start making stuff before you really figure it out.
I got a little ahead of myself and started doing this uh, before I filmed it. Sorry guys. So let's back up and explain. I went ahead and got this side all figured out. What I did was I took all the drawer faces and laid them out to kind of figure out how they were going to go in their spacing. And then I like to make a story stick with the blue tape uh, where I measure out how big the drawer is and I figure out where the drawer slide needs to go. And then I use that as a reference for putting the drawer slides together because drawer slides get very difficult very quick and I'm not the smartest when it comes to the maths. So this is how I like to do it. I like to lay it all out first and then just follow my story on the tape and then there's no issues. And then I can just take a second piece of tape, transfer those marks and move it to the other side here and then bang, we've got parallel drawer slides. All right, the next step is to do the sweet vertical drawer. I don't know what we're gonna call that. What would you guys call this thing? Leave a comment down there in the little doobly-doo. So to put this thing in, all we gotta do is put the drawer slides onto the back of the panel, and then I'm gonna use the double-sided tape trick to stick the thing in, and then we'll just screw it in. Before we put the thing into position, well, we have room from the back, and I have a second set of hands from Jordan. Then we have to put the door on, a little finish, a little bing, a lot of boom, and we'll have a thing. Let us spray. John's back. Hi friends, it's me, John. Want to send a big thank you out to Sam, just Sam, uh, for getting a lot done on this project. Um, Jordan gave it a good effort, but he had to retire and go home. So last thing we need to do then is get all these blades organized. We have a, we have a, would this be a conundrum of blades? No. Conundrum's not a measurement. That's a difficult situation. We just have a ridiculous amount of the blade, mostly blade sizes. Things we use the most are the 10 inches and the 12 inches. I want to have a, a, like a dowel for uh, dull ones and ones that are fresh and ready to be used. So we're just going to lay these out into our pullouts, insert some these are about quarter inch dowels, and then this thing should be wrapped. And that's going to be a wrap on this one. The guys did a great job of getting this thing buttoned up. If you want to build one yourself, I've got a plan down below. This thing has a ton of storage and you can pretty much do anything you want in any of these three hubs. All of those are interchangeable. Super fun. If you want to see another shop project, I've got it queued up for you right here.